is a United States uh, Republican candidate. Uh, Austin Peterson's been on the show a number of times, and he is challenging the party establishment. He's going up against Josh Hawley, uh, the winner of the August primary, uh, will then take on Claire McCaskill for the U.S. Senate. Austin Peterson, welcome back to the show. Good morning. What's this uh, story about you holding a live chicken? The last time somebody did that, they were having a slump in uh, Bull Durham. What's going on here? <laughs> well, first of all, you should know that's a real Peterson chicken from the Peterson farm out in Peculiar, Missouri. All right. Uh, basically, we're calling Josh Hawley out. We had a debate last Friday night, and he refused to show up. You know, Ann Wagner was there, and she said, you know what? You can't win if you don't show up. All right, hold on a second. So you had a debate scheduled for last Friday. Mm-hmm. And what happened? Everybody was invited. It was Great America, Missouri PAC out here. A bunch of uh, Trump-loving Americans, and they invited all of the Senate candidates to share their ideas with the crowd, of which there was about 400 people there, and a, a reporter from Politico in the audience, right. uh, as well as the Post-Dispatch was there. So it was a great opportunity, uh, and he refused to show. Now, and, did did he say he was going to be there beforehand? Uh, no, they set up some event with like three people in Sykeston. I think it was to kind of like look like, oh, we're busy. You right. Know? So so. so he never said he was going to show up and then didn't didn't show. No. He he just never went. Right. Yeah. But but you would like to debate him. Uh, yes, absolutely. I would love to debate him. I have a lot of questions for the attorney general, mainly about why he came out in favor of gun control, why he's in favor of warrantless surveillance, what, where he would have uh, voted on the omnibus bill. There's some important questions I think the people of Missouri need to have answered. When did he come out in favor of gun control? Oh, he came out and said that we need to not only ban firearms accessories with executive orders, which is technically to the left of the Obama administration, and he also said he was open to other measures as well, as well as expanding NICS, which many of the civil libertarians in Congress, like Mike Lee and Rand Paul and others, have said has some problems, especially when it comes to what may happen to our veterans who return from overseas and what happens to their firearms rights. What are NICS? Yeah. NICS, National Instant uh, uh, Criminal Check System. It's like the federal background check, right? And they want to expand this. Essentially, what they want to do is like uh, talk about like if you have PTSD or you're a returning veteran, you may lose your gun rights. But you can't lose an individual right without due process. Right. And that's what I think needs to be instilled. You cannot go, you have to go before a judge before you lose an individual right, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, how's your fundraising going? Pretty good. Uh, we've got about half a million in the uh, that we've raised so far. We're the only not Josh Hawley candidate that's in the black that uh, has no debt, that has cash on hand, that's able to uh, put out a field program, get people around the state. We got phone bankers, yard signs. Um, and uh, it looks like, really, I'm the only one who's actually campaigning because at, yeah. up until this point, like what the political article said, Hawley's been mailing it in. Yeah. Um, so I've been out of the country, so I apologize. So sure, I haven't yeah. been, been following the race as, as, as closely as I yeah. normally do. Did I hear a story where you and the other candidates got together to finance a poll and then the, the one with the least support would then step away? Yes, yeah, so there was a grassroots unity agreement contract that was signed by myself and Tony Minetti about a month ago. <clears throat> and we started to get the impression they were getting cold feet after they had signed the document. We agreed to a scientific poll. Uh, so a week ago, he called us, said he was dropping out unequivocally. He would not live up to the terms of the contract. So uh, we contacted the Post, and the Post-Dispatch uh, contacted Tony. He said he didn't drop out, so he lied to the reporter. Uh, and then he said he's back in. So he got on the bus at the debate with us in front of the Post-Dispatch reporter, uh, made an agreement, shook hands, said, let's go forward with this scientific poll, got off the bus, his, his campaign guy yelled at him, said, get back on the bus. He came back on the bus and said, no, 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 we want to make it an unscientific poll. <laughs> okay. Who's going to agree to an unscientific poll? <laughs> right. So he broke the contract three times. And the whole point of it was to show, it, you know, that the grassroots could either come together or that one of the two candidates, the grassroots contenders to Josh Hawley, mm -hmm. is not honest and won't keep their, their word or keep their promises. Right. I think we've demonstrated that. Yeah. So in the end, you know, we come out ahead. Yeah. Austin Peterson, our guest for a couple of minutes. So what you want to do is you want to you want to slay the dragon. Yeah. Josh Hawley is the – and it, people are saying establishment candidate – as it's a dirty word, right, right. Um, but I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that. But but he is the establishment candidate. He is the. I don't know if there's smoke filled rooms anymore, but he is the odds on favorite the to win. The golden boy. He's raising the money. He's right. got the pedigree. Mm -hmm. You're sort of this unknown out of nowhere coming along. Mm -hmm. You've been on the show numerous times. Mm -hmm. We don't even ask you anymore. You come on. You're in town. You pop. You give us a call. We're more than happy to put you on. The same as we do with all the candidates. But mm -hmm. you're the one who's kissing the babies, shaking the hands. Uh, Politico came out, as you said, with this article that was somewhat critical of Josh Hawley, and and some some pretty important uh, people, establishment people, have come out and criticized Josh Hawley as well. But what do you have to do 
to change the mind of the person who says the best chance to beat Claire in the fall is with Josh Hawley. And Austin Peterson, I might like the guy, and he's really good, but he's just, I got a, Josh Hawley's got a better chance to beat Claire in the fall. Well, he doesn't have a better chance. If money could buy elections, Hillary Clinton would be the president right now, or Jeb Bush. Uh, one, he's not working for it. I've, the political article confirms everything that I've been saying, that he's lazy, that he's mailing it in, that he doesn't want this. When he was challenged about why he wasn't working hard, he said, I didn't even want to do this, like mom's making him clean his room here or something. He's, he's taking on a powerful incumbent Democratic senator. Here's why I can beat Claire McCaskill, and I'm the only guy who can do it. The last time that Claire McCaskill took on the Republican Party, uh, six years ago, the Libertarians got 6% of the vote, okay? Now, 50% Republican vote, right? 6% Libertarian vote. I get all of those votes in a general election. That's victory right there. But I know I can get a lot of independents, and I have a platform that's attractive even to a few civil liberties-loving Democrats. So 50% of the Republicans, 6% of the Libertarians, which no other Republican can get those votes. If we go into a general election and it's Josh Hawley or some other guy or whatever, the Libertarians wage war. But I am the only guy who can unite the clans in this state, who can bring together all the different groups and have a platform that's, that's appealing to everyone in this entire state. Remember, the primary is a purity test. But the general election, you have to have something that's appealing to everyone. I'm the only candidate that has that, and I'm the only candidate who's put in the work. I was in our state capitol, by the way, yesterday. Mm-hmm. I was uh, uh, the great Paul Kurtman, who's running for auditor right now, uh, introduced me around. Those state legislators right now are terrified. They're terrified because I've been every conservative stronghold in this state, and they're about ready to grab the torches and pitchforks because of what's happening right now with this special session. And a lot of them are getting cold feet about the stuff that's happening with Greitens right now. They're 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 worried about their own jobs right now because they're because of the Greitens. So because, you know, the conservatives in this state, whether you do or not, it's just objectively, they still support the governor. They think that this is a witch hunt. And when I was asking them, what are you all going to do? What's happening right now? The legislators were telling me, some of us, we, they were saying we wish we hadn't put our name on that list right now yeah. because now we've got egg on our face. Josh Hawley is uh, investigating the governor, yeah. his own party. Threw him uh, under the bus. Uh, um, he will say that he is busy. With all of these investigations, sure. doing his job, the yeah. current job that he has, yeah. and that it's still early, and that he'll have plenty of time to raise all the money and do all the things, but right now he's focused on his current job. If that was true, then why did we cap- capture him at the gym in Columbia when he's supposed to be working in Jefferson City? Uh, Claire McCaskill actually told a GOP uh, uh, congressman in this state that she has him on camera at the gym 86 times when he is supposed to be at work in Jefferson City. So no, he's not doing his job as Attorney General. He's opened up a lot of cases. Some of these people that he has actually gone after and shut down some of these businesses haven't even been charged with a crime yet. So he's opened up all these cases that he has no intention of closing. He's working out at the gym. He's not fundraising like he's supposed to be doing. He's mailing it in. He's not doing his job as AG. He's not doing his job as candidate. I, frankly, I have a hard time understanding why anybody wants to give this guy a promotion. I don't see what's wrong with exercising. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's wrong with exercising daily? Well, don't skip Leg day, then, Josh. Why do, you because... <laughs> say that Josh, why do you say that he is throwing the governor under the bus? He's just doing his job. No, you're not just doing your say. job. He has a conflict of interest. He is running for the United States Senate at the same time that he is doing a job as Attorney General. And the reason why he said that the governor needed to step down was because the accusations that were made against him, which were ser- simply allegations. And as we saw last week, that case was dismissed. If you defend due process, then you you may not always be popular. People people all everybody wants beheadings without due process. But if you always defend due process in the Constitution, in the end, you can't get in trouble. Right. And Josh Hawley's in trouble. But but you, but let's let's go to Greitens here for for a second because I think a lot of what's going on with Greitens is being is being uh, um, sort of superimposed on Josh Hawley. Mm-hmm. Josh Hawley is investigating crimes. Mm. Should he be criticized or? Um, vilified or or looked down upon for investigating some of these crimes, even though it's a governor within his own party? That seems to me like that's a profile and courage right there. Yeah, the first week that um, you know we were down in Springfield when we started our campaign, Josh Hawley was down there busting some massage parlors. Those Many of those massage parlors now have been closed, and yet none of them have been brought up on charges. Well, it takes time. <laughs> So when is he going to do it? Well, I mean, the man's only been in office for for a year and a half. So I mean, it right. takes time. an office Some that he things... promised he, a job no, no, that he no, promised no. he would do. I mean, I mean, that come on, that's that's a little that's a little thin. Uh-uh. I mean, but he's investigating the governor, mm. 
and we'll see what happens. He, I thought but, he was handing off prosecutions to the Democratic prosecutor here in St. Louis. I, if he wanted to do well, the job, but certainly you, he you, could take no, that well, jurisdiction. Well, look, I mean, but uh, back to Im- impeachment for a second and oh. due process, because yeah. you would agree that um, what might be a crime mm-hmm. might not be impeachable. Right, yeah. And what's impeachable might not be a crime. Right, yeah, you can be impeached for anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. I impeach you right now. Well, <laughs> do, you, do you think... Governor Greitens has done anything to this point that we know of that is an impeachable offense. At this point, I'll be honest, I don't know because we haven't seen any evidence for such. We've right. only heard a lot of accusations. Well, what about him not wanting to speak to the investigative committee? Why wouldn't he go in and, and talk to them? I don't know. I don't know. I, honestly, I would, love, I would love to know because I'd love to be able to tell you. But all I can right. say is right now is that when I was in the Capitol yesterday talking to these legislators, the, the Republicans especially, they are scared out of their minds yeah. because they, they know that the conservative base is upset yeah. with them and they don't want this to go But forward. But I do find yeah. interesting that, that Eric Greitens is the darling of the right, mm-hmm. and he has all this mm, stuff surrounding him. Yeah, yeah. Josh Hawley's a family man, a good guy, yeah. right? Good pedigree, and he's the one being criticized, yeah. and Greitens is the one who's being defended. Yeah, yeah. Strange to me. I, I don't know. I mean, I, that's a psychology question right yeah. there. I mean, yeah. why, do we like, why do we like Trump? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. come on. Like the no, guy. I, 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 it's another good question yeah. for you. All right, Austin Peterson. Um, so when are we going to see this live chicken ad? Is it out there already? <laughs> yeah, just go to uh, my Facebook page, um, yeah, AP for Liberty on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's pinned to the top. Uh, check it out. And, Were uh, any look, animals injured in the filming no, of that commercial? No, but it did squawk like right at a perfect time. People thought it was fake, but no, that chicken definitely squawked. So right that is not fake news. That's no, a real chicken that's squawk. a real Peterson farm chicken there. Yeah. Uh, Austin Peterson. Peterson, safe uh, travels, and when you're back in town, stop by. Thanks, friends. Uh, Now, 